Captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McGarren Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is gonna be a little bit bumpy! <laughs> Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with Gorgeous George and Gold. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From the fight capital of the world inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, and from the MB Studios in Costa Mesa, California, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes, our ace co-host, and back east, he's going to handle all the producing duties today. It's Danny. He's back. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? How you doing, Danny? You're back, huh? Yeah, I'm back. I, I limped here today. What happened to you? Uh, Well, I thought I had the flu, um, but it turns out after I went to the doctor, because I had a weird bruising on my leg, that I, have, I had a leg infection, and it was producing like flu-like symptoms, like a high fever and stuff like that. So, uh, fingers crossed everything's okay. I'm taking tons of antibiotics. But uh, I'm not contagious, so that's why they let me come back to work. Was that like a staph infection or what? I, it, it hasn't broken the skin, which is like one of the main reasons why I'm not contagious. So they didn't want to break the skin to test it, so they're treating it as either a staph infection or cellulitis. Huh. So. Well, I... Better, than you, better you than me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, Jesus. I'm, uh, I'm in pain still as well. So, Georgie may be the only guy that's uh, 100% with his body. I don't know your body. So well, I'll tell you what. Sense. A couple of days of Disneyland will fucking take that out of you. That's for sure, man. I walked my ass off the last couple of days. I had to sit there like an old man and stretch my calves a couple of times per day, you know, in certain parts of the uh, the park. Anytime I had a chance to just literally, like, stretch them, man. I'm telling you, it's a lot of walking, a lot of ups and downs. I think I've just been pushing hard going to, you know, weddings up to USA Today Sports. In L.A., a lot of driving around, doing the show here in Costa Mesa, then flying right back to Anaheim and, and getting that thing going. I, uh, I saw you was cutting in line. A, a, a yeah, time. that was pretty gangster. <laughs> that's that's why your legs are tired. <laughs> you see some of the people's faces. Dude, that's the most incredible thing. I, I really enjoyed cutting in line. And you're not going to believe, I, I sent out a video. First of all, goes, how come I can't see you on Facebook? Did it clear up already? It still says the show will start soon. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. Oh, okay, maybe I have to, maybe I need to hit refresh or something. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Let me do some some shout outs because there were some people that were anxious for the show to begin. Nicole Vertucci, she says she's there. Martin Alvarez, wishing us a good morning. Same goes to you, Jamie Farrow. Same goes to you, James Jimmy Hughes. Says evening guys, so he must be a Brit or a Euro because uh, show starts a little bit later over there. And we'll get to a few more, but I definitely wanted to catch the few that tuned in. Tony, Tony, Tony Clark says, fellas, 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 always good to see. You. I think that's South Dakota, Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, check this out. So there's the fast pass, right, where you go and you get your ticket and then you, you come back an hour later, but you can kind of legally cut through the line. And then there's another version of fast pass where you don't have to go get that ticket. You just walk up because you know someone and guys, I swear to God, I think we topped that one yesterday. So I'm with Brian Rocha. Juliet's homie for a long time and my homie now. And he goes, 
let's go to Pirates of the Caribbean. And I go, all right, because I like Pirates of the Caribbean. So we walk over there. We didn't even go through any of the front lines. We went through the exit, guys. We just walked up through the <laughs> exit. And I don't know who he gave the head nod to, but you know how as people like, um, you know, when you, you get on on one side and then you exit on the other side close to the restaurant goes? Dan, yeah. you've never been, but goes, you have, right? Uh-huh. Well, basically, when someone exited, they just stopped the next group that was about to jump on, and we jumped on from that side. Jesus. <laughs> people must have been I'm furious. You, That's a long-ass line. Oh, well, well, you know what? I think people are just minding their own business. That they, who knows what they're wondering? You know, we didn't make a big stink out of it. I'm not wearing sunglasses at night like Corey Hart or nothing, like trying to look like I'm special. <laughs> so who knows what they thought? By special, I mean like a you know, celeb or anything or an athlete. But I don't think anybody tripped. And because the boats just kind of come one after the other and they're so close, they probably don't care. All right, I'll catch the next boat. But I'm telling you, man, there was some gangster moves being performed yesterday. If not for those, I could see how a day at Disneyland might suck because those 30 or 40 minute lines, holy cow, the, those are no good. Did uh, In the end, it was good. It was a great time. So did Brian Rocha have to go with you everywhere you went or did you just call him and go, hey, Big Thunder Mountain, meet me there in 10 minutes or how did that work? Oh, no, 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 no. He hung out. He hung out. Oh, okay. Now, he would get us onto like three rides and then he'd have to bolt. He was with his kid this time, little Zach, but... um. He he, he kind of works from home, and there's one few passions of life that he has. One of them is Disneyland, and so he's there a lot. So uh, plus we were there, so he wanted to hang out. But have you been on that Cars ride in California Adventure Goes? I haven't. No, I thought it was for kids. Same thing. Well, it is, but no adults can go on it. Same thing, man. We just bulldozed all the way to the front. We just bypassed some line, and and then uh, boom, we jumped on. We also went on Toy Story at California Adventure. Uh -huh. Now, that one, Juliet and I had to wait 30 minutes. We get to the very end, and just as we're about to jump in, that's where Brian kind of shows up and just walk, <laughs> walks in. So he kind of gangstered us on that one, uh -huh. but it's because he had just gotten there. It, it, was, it was the most hilarious thing. I couldn't believe it. So for people who, who didn't grow up, well, we grew up in Orange County, California. So where we grew up, Disneyland was, what, 10, 15 minutes away? And Correct. what would happen is, as a kid, we would get a Disneyland pass. It was a hundred bucks for the year. It's not like that no more. But what it's would happen is, one hundred and fifty now for the year. Mm -hmm. No, because I think Rodney it went up has seven fifty. I think he pays like three. That's what he told me. That's what he told me. That no, might be like no no blackouts, and that might be a crazy one. But anyway, no, he has he has like two weeks of blackouts. But yeah, it's not important. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. So anyway, um. That was what some parents would use almost as a babysitter because in the summer you would just say me, between me and my friends, the parents would take different turns dropping you off at Disneyland in the morning and then picking you up late at night. For them, it was great. You know, they don't have to hire a babysitter or nothing. And we would just roam the park. You know, at first it's let's get on all the rides. And as you get older, it's hey, let's check out the chicks, you know. And uh, that that was what we would do all the time. It was either that or and then the next year, I think we would do like a Knott's Berry Farm one. I ended up getting a pass because of getting stuck on that ride for one year so that's when we had to make the switch over to, to Knott's Berry Farm but um, that's what we would do as kids is just Disneyland 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 yeah it was cool I liked it I, I'd go back again not maybe in the next not, not not in 2017 but give me a year and I'd probably go back every it really is the happiest place on earth nobody's tripping nobody's talking Trump or Facebook or shootings or anything everyone's just smiling and saying hello and Little kids are happy, so that made me happy. I needed something like that. It was cool. Uh, shout out again to Brian for just hooking the, those those passes up. Same with Kent. Kent M. Really, really treated us well. Today we're going to be talking to Kevin Casey, Paul Daly, and Brennan Ward. Bo uh, all three fight for Bellator. Bellator 170 takes place January 21st at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Daly and Ward will actually be fighting each other. They come on back-to-back -back in the second hour, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, 11.30 a.m. Pacific. We'll finish up. It'll be one right after the other. I think Ward first, then Daly. Uh, in the first hour, we'll talk to Kevin Casey, who, by the way, met Obama recently because it's on his Instagram and on his Twitter, so I definitely want to ask him how that came about. That was cool. 
I would definitely like to meet the leader of uh, our nation someday, whoever it is, honestly, whether I voted for them or not, I'd, I'd love to do that. I think Go's got a chance. Did you get a handshake in Go's, or, or was it just a head nod? And uh, which president was it? I've met two of them. I've met Clinton and Bush. On one of them, I was almost shot dead by the Secret Service. That was on Clinton. And the other one went fine. That was on 4th Street, actually. Wh- why were you almost shot dead? Because I had a... Before you go in, you have to go through pat-downs, metal detectors, and then like kind of what you're used to at the airport. And I had a disposable camera, because that's all you were allowed. And I had it in, the, in my jacket, inside my jacket, in my pocket. So he was lining up, shaking hands. So I go, oh, okay, cool. And I, I kind of went in. And I reached for my camera to pull it out and take a picture. And the Secret Service grabbed him and pulled their guns out. And I was like, whoa, 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 it's a camera, it's a camera. I think some teachers even screamed, like, it's a camera, it's a camera. And I think maybe the screaming got them a little bit more on edge. To your clothing so that it looks like your fight to make. But there was an interesting story where Jacare was asked to be sort of a backup for that fight between Yoel Romero and Chris Weidman, the... That's mm-hmm. the fight that got Romero, the likely title shot. He made it all the way to 189 pounds, and then he was told to shut it down because everybody else was good. To go, So I don't know if they were possibly expecting, uh, maybe they were just ensuring that, you know, one of those two fighters didn't get hurt or, or made weight because obviously was going to produce some sort of a number one contender, although I don't know if Weidman would have surpassed Jacare. That that sounds unusual. I think it would have been impossible. But what I found, in just, well, what I found interesting is why they didn't match up Tim Kennedy with Jacare that night mm-hmm. once uh, Rashad Evans fell out. It could be that maybe Jacare wasn't down or who knows. But uh, how about Floyd Mayweather saying he offered Conor McGregor $15 million to fight? Conor McGregor wants $100 million. The funny thing is, though, is, is, is that's what Floyd Mayweather says. That's what he would make. And so, therefore, McGregor would make uh, $15 million. He says he's done his own research, and he doesn't see where McGregor's made more than 8 or 9 So this is a bump up for him. But he says he's the, uh, the, the, the top player, you know, in that matchup. And I guess he wants a guaranteed $100 million. You know, I thought the two of them being big pay-per-view draws, that Connor could make 100 and Floyd maybe two. Because I thought it really could be that big, but you know me. I tend to overestimate well, things. I, I think it's pretty cool that, I mean, the one thing that stuck out in that story was, yeah, he, he, you know, he, he gets his money, but he, he, they still hadn't even crossed the bridge of pay-per-view cuts. And even if it's a small percentage, you've got to imagine Connor's going to possibly double the show money just off the back end on the pay-per-views. So even though it's $10 million, that's still a lot of money. When you add it, when you factor in pay-per-view and all that, but yeah, what's going to happen? I mean, more than likely, if it's a boxing fight, he's going to get his ass kicked, man. I mean, there's there's almost Here's no what it way boils around down it. To. It boils down to Conor McGregor's not a $10 million boxer, but Conor McGregor can sell pay-per-views. That's the one thing he can do no matter what he does, and so he is entitled to a huge cut of that because – if he doesn't go in there and partake in whatever form of combat sports they're paying him to do, MMA, boxing, anything else, mm-hmm. and guess what? A lot of people aren't making money, but people are willing to pay for him to go in there and do things like that. But, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's I don't even know if Canelo Alvarez has made $15 million for a fight in all of his career. Who knows? He may be getting to that point. It's funny how economics works nowadays. The one- we didn't get too much feedback on Mark Hunt filing a civil lawsuit against the UFC, Brock Lesnar, Dana White. Do you want to call in about that? Shoot. Fire it on over, 866-522-2846. As I'm, doing, as, as I'm going through these headlines, I'm hearing Kevin Casey may not be on today's show, so it'll just be our two guests. That leaves the first. are wide open for you to call in, 866-522-2846. Especially, say some more on that? Yeah, I just want to say one more thing that does have to his advantage is I'm not so sure Floyd will be used to that it's going to look sloppy to him, right? Because I don't think Connor's going to come out and conventionally box him. He's probably going to be thrown from weird angles. And, you know, maybe that could be the one thing that, that Floyd's just never seen. And we all know, you know, a punch can land from here to there. You don't know what it's going to do to your body, especially a guy like Floyd. 
I mean, we saw the first time he ever got cut, how, how that affected him. So, I mean, I guess he does have that to his advantage. But, man, if I'm Connor's agent or, or even a friend, I'm probably saying, look, man, take the fight. That's great, a lot of money. But you're probably going to expect an ass kicking here. Right. And the big part of the equation is it has to happen under the UFC umbrella slash banner because they're not just going to let Connor go out there and make money He's under contract, and I think they're going to want a piece of their pie. I think they've been pretty clear about that. So Floyd needs to worry about working out a deal with Dana White before even getting into Connor talks, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. Dana's going to want a piece of that. Um, on Facebook, I got asked by Daniel Joyce, could we play music in those first 10 minutes before the show? Could we possibly play music just as people are getting these the levels on, on the show for you guys to be able to hear that? And in order to do that, then you would, I mean, unless George and I just stay completely quiet for those 10 minutes, then it's not a big deal. But if we're talking to each other, then they would hear us talk. There you go. But you know what? Every day we're finding certain tweaks to the show and how we can present it. So if we can, we will. We've even talked about possibly doing a pre-show and just going in there and shooting the shit, answering some questions. So give us a few minutes, or sorry, a few days to kind of work out some kinks and see what we can and cannot do. In the meantime, we do put the show on a few minutes early, and uh, I know some of you are like, what's going on? When's the show? And, I mean, it clearly says the show's about to begin, but for some of you that maybe can't read or just, uh, I guess, want to pile, you know, pile drive through all that, we start at 10.03 p.m. uh, a.m. Pacific time. Anything prior to that? We're just basically firing up the show, and Goes is making sure all the connections are right. And there's some last-minute stuff behind the scenes before we present the show that just needs to be uh, tightened up, and that's why it's the way it is. But if, if we can get it and streamline it and make it more crisp or, or, or participate some way going forward before the show, we'll do that. All right. Um, we have some callers. Let's talk to them, and then we'll get back to some Facebook shout-outs. Start off with Josh in Ontario. What's going on, Josh? How you doing? Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, I was just listening to Tuesday's podcast, GG, and you mentioned uh, you were talking about Jimmy Rivera real quick. You said you thought he played his cards wrong by not taking the fight uh, this weekend. I watched an interview uh, with uh, James Lynch, a Canadian reporter, that he did with uh, Jimmy. And Jimmy, he, like, threw everything out there, and he said that, He's not interested in uh, easy paychecks. He's interested in tough fights. He thinks he's uh, right there. Uh, he, he thinks he's right there for either Cruz or Dillashaw or uh, the champ. And he also said that he won a few rounds. I know it was in practice or whatever, but he said he, he's not too worried about Dillashaw either. He said uh, he uh, had pretty good luck with him in the few rounds they did share together. Yeah, but not a lot of people know who he is. I mean, the fight over Faber was huge. He just did a two-month camp. Why not go out there? The paycheck's sitting there waiting for you. They just got you someone who's not as ready as you are. I get that, but it's still a tough mf -er. You don't get to be in the UFC by just kind of being a tomato can, which is kind of what he was implying. Yeah, he's a higher-ranked fighter. Yeah, he'd be the favorite. Probably a good chance he would win, but we've seen things that happen in the UFC that are way more unusual than Jimmy Rivera losing to Marlon Vera. So... Uh, he said he was concerned about Marlon Rivera. Well, that would have been a chance for Marlon Rivera to make some money for his daughter. He, Jimmy Rivera could have made some money to improve his camp, and later on in the summer, more people would have known who Jimmy Rivera was. He would have added to his streak. He would have got closer to that newer contract that will pay you more. So I saw a lot of positives that I believe he missed out on, honestly. Now, if all that is a disguise for, hey, I didn't know what to expect from this guy, I like to be prepared, then I get it. But for the most part, I just thought there was way more positives than negatives. Yeah, you can make the matchmaker happy, make your bosses happy. It just seemed like there's more positive than negative. Right. You grab the mic, you say, now you call out Dominic Cruz in front of millions, you know, and or whoever else you want to call out. But not too many people know Rivera. Or, I mean, uh, excuse me, the uh, Avera, what was the opponent they had for him? Marlon uh, Vera. Yeah, yeah, not too many people know him. And... Uh, Jimmy, he's, he's not, he wasn't, not once did he mention about losing the fight. That didn't come up out of his mouth once. He was more worried about taking an injury. What if he, like, breaks his hand on this guy's face and, you know, then he's out for an extended period of time when he, he feels he's right there uh, at the top of the division. But that's all right, not, what that's if another Bantamweight comes in 
what if another Cat Bantamweight comes in before he fights and wows the crowd and oozes charisma, and next thing you know, the UFC wants to rally behind that guy, and, and now Jimmy Rivera kind of gets stuck, you know, back in the pack. That can right. Too. right now, right now, this keeps them sort of in line. We're two weeks out from the Cruz and from Garbrandt. I think he's trying to keep that, you know, the same timing uh, as as the t- top contenders in the division. But I'm, I'm, big, I'm big through. on Rivera. I'm big on Rivera. I think he's uh, he's got a lot of uh, he's got a big future here in this division. But that's all I got, guys. Have a great show. Thank you. See you. Okay. Take care. Where do you sit on that one, guys? Ah, uh, very funny. I- what? I'm asking, where do you sit on that? Don't you think he should have fought? This close to a paycheck on Sunday, he would have got paid 30, 40 times two, especially if he's that confident he's going to win, maybe a bonus. That would have been huge for his own family, for his career. Well, I, you know, just and, to and make of a... Of course, you know, it, it's a reward to all the hard work, too. That's what I was going to say. Is there's got to be a release to what you're doing. You know, if you're putting in all that work and there's no release, that's got to be a terrible feeling. But even aside from that, man... If I'm in this position, I just want to make my bosses happy. I want to make the matchmaker happy. Like I said, I mean, there's just so much good that can come out of it. And, yeah, there's a little bad, but, I mean, you're expecting that in every fight, aren't you? So I would go out there and and do what I do best. One more call. Brian from Boston. What's up, Brian? Hey, guys. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, Mark Hunt. Um, Is it irrefutable that uh, Lesnar – Popped hot. Did he flat out cheat, or is he doing the tainted supplement thing too? Brock Lesnar was well. That that case has already been settled, but I think that's what he went with tainted supplement because think, he got reduced. I, well, you know what? Early on, we kept saying first fr- infraction, two years automatic, blah blah blah. But but they've been giving a year if you cooperate or if you can prove there was a tainted supplement and you know you negotiate your fine down um i'd have to go back and read exactly what that what happened with brock but but he conceded and so did usada therefore he's down to a year all right if he flat out cheated and they can prove that i don't have a problem with uh mark hunt suing him civilly i don't think it's the smartest idea for mark hunt to sue his employer at the ufc i'm not i don't think that's a great idea but i don't have a problem with him going after Lester, if that dude just flat out went in there cheating, you know, coming from pro wrestling to do that, I don't have a problem with Hart with Hunt doing that. You know, Mark Secondly, Mark Hunt's thinking, relationship with the UFC is when you think about it, has been ups and downs, right? Because when he when he first came in, oh, yeah. he was part of that whole pride thing and they didn't really they didn't even want him. And he stuck around no, and then they were like, Holy shit, this guy, he's a draw, people love him. He's doing great, and now this pot kind of pops up. So he, he's really had an up and down relationship with the UFC. Yeah, I agree. Oh, well, um, I'd like to see him do. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. All right. So if he if Hunt can get by Overeem uh, in spectacular fashion, I, I would just like to see him start calling out Lesnar again to fight him off the roids, fight him off the juice. Uh, Lesnar's able to go in six to seven months. And if I were Hunt, man, I, I would kind of go Conor McGregor, even though I know that's not his personality. I'd start, I'd start showing up at some of these wrestling events where Lesnar is and pay somebody who has a front row ticket to get right up there so Lesnar can see him. And that would be a hugely marketable fight. Because if I were Hunt, man, I, I'd want revenge on a guy who came in and cheated like that. I know it's not his personality, but he is talking about making money, and that, that would sell. I don't disagree with you one bit. I don't think Mark Hunt would do that because he lives on the opposite end of the planet. But when he did come to fight, he came about two months early or a month early. And perhaps then he could have taken some sort of a side trip. Now, by then, I think Brock had stopped performing. And Brock doesn't perform very often for WWE. I don't think he becomes one of those guys that hits the road. I think they get him for a block of time. So you're right. If you're going to invest in a future matchup, maybe do it now. Um, I just don't see Hunt, I guess... He's more of a family guy. Sticks to. I mean, he doesn't have right. He doesn't have the personality. Yeah, if he was more of a single guy and he could do that, like Luke Rockhold, I could picture doing something like that, or he can just pick up and go and do it, and you know, um, get in someone's face, track someone down, stalk them, build for a bigger fight. Yeah, I see that. Hunt, I don't know. As far as what you were saying with Hunt going after the UFC, 
um, man, that one's going to be a tough one to prove. But as you saw with Josh Gross's article where he said that the UFC knew of uh, Vitor Belfort and, and some testing that he had done, if he can get to that level of proof and proving that the UFC knew, then, yes, he may have some sort of a case. If he can't, then I think it'll be very difficult. I think it'll be a loss of money. As far as Brock Lesnar's concerned, he was tested a few times, past most of them. It's, I believe there was one that he tested. Uh, do you remember it was like 13 days before or something like that? Yeah. I'm, try, I'm trying to make sure I don't overlap with what John Jones, uh, with with what happened to him. But I was going to say, though, it, if if it does come down to that, where it is one of those situations where he can prove that the UFC knew, I would expect that to get settled out of court before it even gets to court. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, guys. All right, thanks, good day. Buddy. It was fun talking to you. Thanks for the call. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll take calls. Again, our first guest is not available today, so we're going to go uh, cover some news, take some calls, and there's you know, some time to fill. So get in in the queue at 866-522-2846, and we'll be right back after this break.
They are the Wright Brothers of Mixed Martial Arts. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. Billy Joel will be playing iconic stadiums throughout the country this summer. And SiriusXM subscribers have the opportunity to purchase tickets before they go on sale to the general public. Get your tickets to see The Piano Man at Fenway Park in Boston, Wrigley Field in Chicago, and for the first time, Dodger Stadium in L.A. Or stops in Philadelphia, Atlanta, and Cleveland. Visit SiriusXM.com slash Billy Joel presale right now for complete information. And don't forget to check out Billy Joel Radio on Channel 18. Want to give a couple shout outs on Facebook. We've been kind of having a little bit of a mini discussion about Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt. First of all, Alan Callender. He's talking a little bit about the, the that steroids topic. Roberto Rodriguez, Brad Vanderson, what's up to you? And uh, I've been talking to Dean Barham and Jeff Helstein. So I think the biggest problem I had was finding out that that test, it was two tests that he failed, not just the one. There was one that was about 10 days before and one that was night of. And even though he had tested, he he had tested negative. I may have said positive before the break. Negative to a bunch of tests prior to, and even though he got in on that four-month window, I'm pretty sure most people didn't have a problem with the four-month window, and I'll tell you why. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten the Brock Lesnar fight at UFC 200, and a lot of people wanted that. So the fact that it came together, the UFC was able to make that happen by waiving the four-month rule, I guess. Mm-hmm. We got that fight. We figured, okay, that's they, there's still six weeks, seven weeks before the fight where they can do some testing, and he did get tested. Test came negative. We got the fight. It's unfortunate that he did, you know, get some positive tests. But out of all of that goes, the problem I had was the Jan- the June 28th test. And I think the fight was on July 9th. So that is about 11 days. That, that test, we find out that there was a really small fee in which the test could have been expedited. And then we could have found out prior to the fight that uh, Brock obviously had been flagged Mm -hmm. the night of it's too late then they've already fought but that other one if the ufc could have expedited that and we would have found out then i believe mark hunt is entitled to know that information and he can decide whether he'll fight or not he's he's actually said in previous interviews it doesn't matter i'll knock i'll knock them out anyway but still to have that info in front of him i think would have been he's due that and any athlete is due that yeah. So going forward, I hope I hope they pay that fee because we found out that fee is not that much. First, we heard it could be tens of thousands, but no, it wasn't not that even much. Close. I've heard seven hundred. I've even heard thirty five bucks. Pay that damn fee. Let's know going in or not. You know what, what this what's happening here. I think you definitely owe it to the fans, to your to the opponents. Um, I, I'll, I'll bet you that at least fifty percent of the opponents go. Let's run it anyway because it's still a payday. You see what I'm saying? It's still a payday to Mark Hunt. Um, and there's just a lot of tough hombres out there that feel like it ain't going to make a difference anyway. But you estrogen know, blockers. Uh, maybe, maybe they think that me. way, but I mean, think about it. If, if you're a sprinter, okay, and you know the other guy's on something, it's like he's got a head start, right? I mean, that means a lot, and I, 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 you have the right to know that. That's that's the part that sucks the most. Yeah, this is a whole other topic that we can just get into some more on another occasion but uh we got some callers on hold and if we have some time in the second hour if you want to call in and we can keep going on this that's fine but at least those are my thoughts just catching up on what i was reading because i knew it overlapped a little bit with what john jones went through as well and i didn't want to misspeak all right so let's talk to uh who do we have now danny we have marco and waco marco what's going on man marco from waco road to pasaratos What's up? Hey, you guys like Disneyland in California, and that is okay, but the one in Orlando, alligator is your, your babies, man. So, screw the Disney in, in Orlando. We we went to, what was it, Epcot Center, George? Right? We didn't go to Disney we did, World, yeah. but we went to Epcot Center. And, man, I don't want to hate, but I didn't really like I mean, I didn't dig it too much. It was like a giant museum. All you do is walk around and yeah. stare at stuff, but you can't touch nothing. 
Epcot is boring. I just got asked. I just got asked about Epcot Center, and I tried my best to explain it. I go, first of all, it was 25 years ago, Whoa. but it was more of a cultural thing where you learn a little bit about different countries. Each country had a presentation, but yeah, it goes. I was expecting rides, and that's not what it is. No. So Disney World in Orlando, Florida, Disney World is made up by the Magic Kingdom. Epcot Center, some sort of a Sea World or whatever the fuck I don't know, but it's a whole bunch of different parks that are actual that actually uh, are all under Disney World. The Disneyland in Anaheim, California. If you just talk about that park, Disneyland um, in Orlando, it's called the Magic Kingdom. And when we went to Disney World, I think we were under the impression we were going to the equivalent of Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we would have said, let's go to the Magic Kingdom, perhaps we may have gotten, you know, that. But I think once we were there, we got confused. We wound up going to Ep- Epcot Center. And I remember me, you, and Dad, we were like, what's this bullshit? Yeah, that was, I think the highlight of that whole day at Epcot Center was you pantsing our cousin on the way out. That was the highlight of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I got him good. I will say this, by then I had entered this, the phase of my life where I just needed high-speed roller coasters, and nothing beats Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. So that's just me taking one for the team there with Disneyland, Magic Kingdom. All those are nothing. If you're into high-speed roller coasters, go to Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. All right, Marco, what else you got? Okay, real quick, if Mark, if that, that test would have been a, a release like the, with the 10 days or whatever the fee, it, Mark Hang wouldn't have a choice because the commission would have stopped the fire like they did with John Jones. So, yeah, it, yeah, it would have right. it would, it would, it would been no, no fight. But on, on Conor McGregor, man, and uh, Floyd Mayweather offered him like $15 million. I mean, if I was Conor, I go full promotional mode, and I tell him, hey, your last fight with Berto, nobody watched. I've been the pay-per-view team for the last year and a half, you know, and uh, you think I only make a million dollars, you're you're wrong, you know, you're getting old, you're slow, and I'm going to knock you out, and he starts selling the fight and ask not for 15 or $100 million, maybe still like $50 million, and maybe we see that fight. You know, it's fantasy land right now, like like the Magic Kingdom, but who knows? We're going to let you guys call you guys. Okay, we'll see it. Yeah, I think I think Mayweather uh, realizes that, and that's why he's going outside of boxing to pick a fight. But just because him and Berto did 500000 he he can't base his salary on that one. He'll sell it on what he thinks the anticipated take will be on McGregor. As far as what I meant with leaving the decision in someone else, I meant if the UFC was to be shady like Hunt has been talking. But I, Mark is 100% right. That fight would come to a halt because once the flag comes up, that's it. The fight's off. Anybody else? We have Bob in Calgary. Bob in Calgary. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Listen, I just called in to get your opinion. Um, have you guys seen that video on YouTube going around where the uh, Russian... Khabib fan got into it with the uh, obviously Irish Conor McGregor fan. No, so there's I haven't a video seen that. now because I only knew the story, but there's a video that goes with it. Oh yeah, dude, there's a video where the patching up buddy got shot in the chest and everything. So this is my question to you: They want to go to Russia with this fight. Are they going to have the army out there securing this? Because I am telling you right now, guys, if this happens where Khabib gets knocked out in 13 seconds and they pull an Aldo. I don't know what's going to happen in the in, in the in the in the stands. There's going to be like a shootout. Well, they just recently had a Winter Olympics. They're going to have a World Cup in 2018. They swear that when they are a secure site for any type of sporting event, it's as safe as you can uh, as you can have it. Now that said, Bob, Manchester United went to the Ukraine, which isn't Russia, I get, but still. They went to the Ukraine recently, and they played in a Europa League game, and there was still warning, security warning, saying, if you're traveling to this part of the world, you know, stay in certain boundaries because they can only protect you up to a, you know, you're going to be safe in the stadium and maybe certain parts outside of the stadium, but but that really is about it. So, yeah, you're right. There's going to be concerns not just in the arena, but mostly outside in, outside the arena. In the arena... I think they'll be fine. Outside the arena, man, that could be a whole other ball of wax. So, yeah, I'm sure that will definitely be addressed. Um, Russia's not the only place where it gets nutty. They've been down to Brazil many times, and it can get nutty down there too. So I'm pretty sure the UFC is on top of it. Hey, if you don't like it, go to Russia. 
<laughs> it was like I, I'm from Canada. We're out here in Montreal where we burn down cities just because people lo- win the Stanley Cup. But guys, I just need you guys to get this message to Connor. Please don't go gangster on this. Like, my goodness, I'm going to be afraid for him. Go your guys' opinion. All right, buddy. Thank you. Did you know, he... it reminds me of Chael Sonnen. The same thing was told to Chael Sonnen. When you go down to six for six weeks to film Latin America, or no, 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 I guess it was Brazil, the Brazilian tough, you know, you got to be careful. And he was. He had, I think he had security with him. But the one thing Chael Sonnen came to figure out was he was very popular in Brazil. Sure, there's a lot of people that hated him. There were Anderson Silva fans or just hated Chael Sonnen, but he had a lot of fans down there. I think a lot of fans can see through his gimmick. So what what I'm hearing from Con, uh, from Connor's camp is that he be on your toes. Uh, yes, have an extra layer of security. Maybe leave your family behind on this one because anything can and will happen uh, when it comes to sports. That's for sure. Did Bob try and put Calgary on the map with Canadians with being street and burning things? Because shit, I think I've seen Black Friday videos out here that are worse than some of the stuff they do after hockey games, right? Well, to be fair, guys, uh, first of all, Canadian people are some of the nicest that occupy this planet. But check out Vancouver. Vancouver lost a Stanley Cup, I think, four, six years ago. I remember that one. And I think it it's was still tame was compared Boston. to some of the dude, other stuff. There was some. Oh, dude, are you sure? I mean, they 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 ravaged that city, and there was some great great street fights and looting and stuff. Um, videos that came out of that one, man. That one was pretty nutty. I'd as have to do my research cities, again. I'm not sure, but but from what I remember over here, man, we're we're tipping over cop cars over there. They're tipping over smart cars, dude. I mean, like, I, I'm not so sure. Maybe they, maybe the Vancouver incident was like the high point, but it for the most bad. part, and especially mm-hmm. you know, like the Russian hooligans, those guys are insane. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's right. I wouldn't take any family that way. Right. Yeah. All right, let's get this other break out of the way. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Give us a couple minutes. This is a smaller break, so we'll be right back. We'll set up the second hour. We'll get you in in this first hour if we have a chance as well. 866-522-2846. Join the discussions like Bob and Marco and Brian and Josh just did. So what you see? Now it's the mad magician with the ill deposition. No repetition. Hold it down, Bronx tradition. It's clear.
Tell your boss to reschedule that meeting. Call your wife and tell her lunch is off. It's time for more MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Goes. Saturday at 4.35 p.m. Eastern, the, uh, the NFL playoffs continue with an NFC divisional round matchup when Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks duel with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Here the Seahawks call on Sirius 81 XM 225 or the Falcons call on Sirius XM Channel 82. Enjoy the national broadcast on Sirius XM, NFL Radio Channel 88, or listen on your team's play-by-play calls on your phone with the Sirius XM app. Early on, I'm thinking, man, Atlanta's tough to stop. Seahawks have a great D, but they're missing some key players at home. If they're at home, I'd probably ride with them, but I think Atlanta takes this one down. In the NFC uh, on the other side, I actually think Green Bay may be on too much of a roll, and they may actually take out the young Dallas team that will learn from it and maybe come back next year and keep their progression. They've had a great year either way. But I, I you see those teams goes that have a veteran quarterback, a, a superstar quarterback, and they just, you know, all of a sudden it seems like they're going downhill when things are cl- clicking, and that's exactly where Green Bay is. It's just, just going to be those 53 players, uh, uh, 20 to 30 coaches and doctors and trainers and and that's it man versus a hundred thousand in that stadium but you know what it's not it's not the end of the world when it's like that sure there'll be some scattered cheese heads but i'm telling you when there's no distractions and you're pinpointing you're you know you're functioning the, the way they're functioning it can be really really dangerous for the home team yeah i think they have a, a really good shot at dallas and if they do man if they take those guys down look out because sometimes it's all about just who's the hot team and right now it's them yeah and i would pick them against uh seattle or atlanta as well although atlanta has got some firepower all right let's take one call here before the end of the first hour but you know what this is your chance to get in so you can be one of the first in the second hour at 866-522-2846 remember our guests paul daly and brendan ward who are featured in the co-main event at bell tour 170 on january 21st They'll be our guests in the second hour. So let's get to Stephen in Connecticut. What's up, Stephen? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for calling in. No problem. Um, I'm just curious your guys' thoughts on the upcoming uh, cerrone Masvidal fight because uh, I don't really hear a whole lot of talk about it going on right now, but I'm just curious as far as the uh, your predictions and like the technical breakdown of it. So thank you. I think if, uh, right, thanks, if you go back and you watch Lorenz Larkin, and George Masvidal, I think Cowboy can do a lot of those types of things if he's patient enough. Uh, for George, I think George really has to press on the gas. And not just that, I think the mental war- warfare, I think he could kind of get inside Cowboy's head a little bit. Uh, I don't think he likes it when, when other fighters do that. Um, early on, I'd probably lean more towards uh, Cowboy. But I definitely see avenues for Masvidal to win. If you if you take the best cowboy against the best Masvidal, I would take Masvidal. Wow, that one's a tough one, and I'm glad we get to see it, and I'm glad we get to talk about it. It's a tough one for me because I'm a big George Masvidal fan, but like you said, goes I think the all around better product is Cerrone. For one, he's pretty good with his hands but i mean he's devastating with his knees and with his kicks he can match masvidal as far as the range and the reach and then his jujitsu game is so underrated and he's worked hard on his wrestling he's just become more of a a complete package than he used to be you know matt brown tried to get in his head it kind of didn't work you know he had some moments it's not like he matt brown didn't have any success he did but i'm talking about the, the end result matt brown lost so there have been some people that have tried to get in his face and, and you know, Cowboy's just smiling and I'm thinking, mm, what's going to happen here? Because years, about five years ago, Nate Diaz really got in his face. Hell, he flicked his hat off mm-hmm. at a press conference or I can't remember. I think it was a press conference. So that time it did work. But Cerrone's kind of gotten past that in the last five years. I don't know that those head games will work much. It's good to show him, hey, I'm not scared of you, but... I don't know that it'll put you over the top, but Nate Diaz, so much he gets you thinking about it's not good. It's been clipped before. Maybe try some of that. George. In a few minutes, stay close. 
Holy cow. Dude, as an adult, that song is way different when you break it down. As a kid, you're just sitting there going, you know, with OPP. But man, as an adult listening at that song now, holy shit. <laughs> exactly, man. I think that guy's name's Trent from uh, Naughty by Nature. I, th- I always thought he was one of the best uh, rappers, but what do I know, man? He had a... You talk to people that are into hip-hop and they get insulted. If you bring up someone from the West Coast, they're like, oh, no, man, it flows better <laughs> on the East Coast. And if it's vice versa, it's like, no, no, I haven't just seen what they're... they're... It's all music. They're all just rapping and singing and rhyming. Shut up. Enjoy it. Yeah, you could be from Montana as long as you're good. Who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. I think that guy had yeah, a baby yeah, with the girl from yeah, Salt and Pepper, Nas's right? Yeah, I heard Nas' album from top to bottom. No, fool. I just hear the <laughs> catchy songs. <laughs> now shut up so I can watch the game. But those people want to have topics and discussions for two hours over an album. Come on. All right. So we're clear here in this uh, second hour for the first 30 minutes. And then we'll get to Paul Daly and Brennan Ward. Actually, it'll be Brennan Ward and then Paul Daly. So if you want to call in and discuss anything we've been talking about or bring in your own topic, it's 866-522-2846. You know, that was an interesting question on the front page of MMA Junkie. It was, what was the greatest win of BJ Penn's UFC Hall of Fame career? Goes, is there one that just stands out with you even having to look at the article or punch yeah. up his resume? Just is, You know, you have to remember one or two where, where you just said, man, that was just BJ Penn doing his thing. I don't know if it's because I saw it live, but uh, when he knocked out Kauno, he kicked him out, and, then, and that's almost like your shit, shit, hold up, I'll be fight, it stands out for me as well. Yeah. I would say, well, I was at the one with Diego Sanchez in Memphis, Tennessee, so that was pretty destructive, because early on, he just bludgeoned him, man, opened up his face, big old gash. On his forehead, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then, of course, he does the whole thing after he finishes the fight where he's just tasting the blood. And I mean, he really looked like a savage there. And I got to see that one in person. So that's one. But then when he just came up and submitted Matt Hughes, you know, it was vintage BJ Penn. Him just not caring who he fought. He took on, at that time, the greatest welterweight ever. Not just a welterweight the greatest welterweight over and finished them so easily that I remember thinking, wow, that was pretty special too. So those two stand out for me. If I had to pick between one or the other, I I think uh, I I may actually still go with Penn over Hughes, even though I didn't witness it in person. I just thought that was remarkable. Mm -hmm. What about the second Hughes, the KO? Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, that was nice too. That was nice too. But then by then, you know, Hughes just wasn't Hughes. Penn was still flying high, but uh, I, I thought the first one was a little bit more representative of where Hughes was. You know, he still will go down as the number two welterweight ever. Mm-hmm. GSP is definitely the number one welterweight ever. But yeah, I'll stick with that one. Also, Tarek Safadine, who just lost a close fight recently, he says he'd like to welcome Rafael dos Anjos to welterweight. I like that. I like that someone who just lost a close fight is figuring out how he can get back in the game. He sees that someone else is uh, jumping to his division, and, and, you know, he's the welcome party. I like it. Make that matchup. Reward those guys for being proactive in their careers, getting people excited, media fans. Let's do it. I'd love to see Tarek Safadine versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos has elected to uh, move up to 170. He fought at 170 before, went down to 55, became a world champion. Now he wants to just go back to 170 and uh, not put his body, you know, through all that torture of, of, of making weight and risking uh, potential, you know, long-term health. So I applaud him for that. Tyron Woodley says, Stephen Thompson has got under my skin so much. And uh, it looks like that one's going to get a little bit more personal if Thompson wants it. But the last time we talked to Thompson, he's still like the nicest guy in the world. So other than maybe facts, and talking about the first fight, you're not going to hear curse words. He's not really going to come at Woodley. I think Woodley's maybe trying to pry some of that out of him, but it, it's just not going to work. It probably won't work with Damian Maya either. Uh, Thompson and Maya are just some of the nicest guys out there. But make no mistake, those guys are brutal as well. So I think that, that's just kind of what Woodley wants. Woodley sees what moves the needle, and it's, it's drama, it's heat. 
it's uh you know rivalries i think and, it's uh, i think it's what the fans say though george isn't it isn't mm-hmm. it more what the media has said what the fans have said that's probably gone under tyron's skin more than like you said i mean Stephen Wonderboy Thompson doesn't really talk trash. I mean, whatever he's saying, he just says because he honestly thinks that's the truth. But he hasn't really gotten out of line or anything. I, I think probably what's gotten under Tyron's skin is what the fans have said, what some of the media has said. And what's that? That a lot of people thought Stephen won that fight. Or that he even deserves the, the, the rematch. Because Tyron doesn't believe he... I, I didn't think they'd have to run it back. I thought it was a great fight. But I just look at it as, like, all right, it was a draw. But guess what? You had your shot at the champ. You didn't succeed. So now it's somebody else's turn. There wasn't anything that showed me that Thompson clearly won that fight. It was a close fight. And if they would have given it to him, all right. But I believe that night... The draw or either guy winning was fine. There was no robbery. And you're right, goes because of that, I just think you move on to the next one. Now, if they had had a draw, but it was a classic, it was a great fight, but it wasn't a classic. Yeah, I have classic moving on to Maya. That's not what they're going to do. And I will say this, Maya has not helped himself over the years with his style. It takes a lot of wins when you fight that way to get world title shots. Whereas if you go in there and you knock some heads around and you talk some shit, obviously you can get there a lot quicker. So maybe Baya brought it on himself. I don't know. But they're not going to change the way they are. That's it. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's funny because that division's a little wacky in that regard, but still so deep. And then there's other divisions where you have a lot of guys that, you know, do talk up a bunch of smack or whatever. And then you start to think, I wish they could be more like martial artists. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can never win. There's always going to be uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Let's take some callers. 866-522-2846. Looks like Showtime's on hold. What's up, Showtime? What's going on, fellas? What's up? Not much, and you? Not the much, man. Shit. Sitting here looking, breaking down these fights. I need a parlay, man. Shit, I, I spent a bunch of money this month and had made shit. So <laughs> it's, it's time for me to get one of my big, famous show lays this weekend, man. What are you thinking? I don't know. I'll, I'll know more tomorrow. I hadn't. I just started looking at it last night, so I'll make my decision by tomorrow on which way I'm gonna go with it. There's but, gotta be one fight you can at least help us out with. Um, I think I'm a I'm a bet on the with the ladies fight. I I like Tweet, but I think the young younger lady is gonna be a little bit too much for. Them. Have you, have you guys broke that down and see that both of those ladies are six foot tall, man? Those are some big girls, man, as far as in statue, you know. Pretty big girls. Uh, both of them six feet. I was looking at that last night, and I was like, wow. Pretty big girls. I just think Are we talking about UFC? Uh, oh, you're, you're, talking about, you're talking about Invicta, right? Invicta. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. Up, I'm they are some tall girls. I thought you were talking about Jones, Leibarger, and Ansaroff. I was like, they're not that tall. Um, no, no, but okay, no. I hear what you're saying. You know, I've been scared to. I don't follow Invicta close enough to put money on them. Only a few of them. There's probably about six to twelve girls that I know very well, where I know that my money's going to be put in a good spot. Those two that are fighting for the uh, interim title, I don't know very very well. Um, but I'm talking about like on UFC Fight Night 103. Is there anything there that you like for your parlay this weekend? Yeah, I like. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll with my guy Walt Harris. I think that's that's one guy that I'm gonna roll with. He, he'll be in my fight. Like, I think he, he's a pretty good fighter. Got a point to prove. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna take uh, Yair over BJ. Man, BJ. BJ is an old guy, man. I was sitting there looking at BJ record, man. BJ has a lot of freaking losses, man. A lot of losses. I mean, I know he was game to step up and wait, fight like that, but. I haven't been impressed with him at all, man. I just think fighting is a young man's game. So uh, I'm, the problem I'm with the year is he's minus five hundred, so it's yeah. not going to help yeah, your parlay does. too much unless he's the seventh or eighth fighter you're adding to the parlay. And then yeah. yes, yeah, because all. the odds go up so high, you know, okay. But um, I would say leave Yair off and just bet like ten or twenty bucks more, and you'll kind of get the same you'll, you'll accomplish the same thing and you won't have to roll the dice 
as much. If you call it, a, you know, like if you're saying that this is a gimme, then go right ahead. But like I said, those that minus 500, man, that is a lot of money. Um, I do like Walt Harris. He's only minus 150. Um, he's with a great camp, very athletic. I think he's starting to get a little bit more of his confidence back that he lost with some of those early losses. So uh, he's a tough character. I also think Frankie Signs, man, that he's That's just one of those. He's one of those wrestlers like Ray Borg, like the type of performance Ray Borg put on the other day. I think he uh, can do the same thing. I think Ben Saunders is going to get the win over Court McGee. When Court McGee's on, he can shut down guys like Ben Saunders. But but um, there's been times when he's out there and. I don't know if he had a rough camp or he just didn't put it all together. And and then there's I re I rarely see Ben Saunders get handled by anyone that other than you know ranked fighters. Um, um, for the most part, Ben takes it to him. So I, I I like Ben. I like Joe Lazan. I like uh, Walt Harris. I co-sign there. Frankie signs. So I may go five deep, or I may eliminate one of those and just go three deep. I'm also thinking about John Moraga. Um, the Pettis brothers just, you know, they, they've had a rough patch, not Sergio as much as Anthony, but, um, Pet Moraga's at home. He can wrestle. He can hit hard. We'll see, especially the fact that he's got a little bit of urgency with his career, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do with Moraga just yet. How about you guys? Have you put together a parlay yet? Somewhat. I like, uh, Ansaroff. I like Walt, Walt Harris and I like Moraga and Joe Lazon, but I mean, there's no sense in going four four yeah and see if we go from four to five or three to four putting in Yair Rodriguez won't help us much so I'd rather just leave him off if you're doing a 10 team parlay and you're moving up to 11 then sure throw him in there especially if you feel like it's a gimme um, you know what I two of those fights George I might have to go against you man I I like court McGee and I, I think it's time for, I think the little younger Pettis is going to step up. I like him. I like what I've been seeing out of him lately. So I think I'm going to get some action and get some value with those two picks right there. All right. Good luck, brother. We'll see what happens. Okay, guys. All right. We'll see you. Damn. Back in the day, a confident George would have said Chipotle or something like that. You know, I was going to, but when am I going to get paid? You know, I mean, um, but there's a pending just Chipotle here for like a order week. out there. Huh? He was just here. Well, that's like what I'm week. saying. So when are we going to see it? When are we going to see Showtime again? Like in May? By then, I'll forget about it. <laughs> um, and then I think about Jason Ford, and you know the 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 wool over my eyes on that one. That one's never going to get paid. So it, it just kind of becomes a waste of time. What I should have told him was, you know what? Don't make that bet. Let me let me save you the juice. Let's go fifty or a hundred or something like that. But damn, I'm just not gangster like that anymore. I'm only gangster at Disneyland. I don't wait in line. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do we got, Danny? Anybody else? Nobody right now. All right, eight six six five two 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 eight four six is the number to call in. We have about thirteen minutes to fill in, and actually three of those will be spent on a break. So hustle in if you want to participate on the show. But I'm writing it down right now. I'm gonna tell you guys right now what I like. I like Lausanne. And then I'm going to figure out the odds, too. Lausanne is minus 125, so pay attention here. Saunders, minus 115. Now, you know, I tell you, to make this thing work, you got to have some underdogs. But luckily, these aren't big favorites. Mm -hmm. So they're not hurting me too much. We have two there. Moraga is an underdog, plus 120. All right. But even then, that, that's not much, much help either. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Signs is minus 165. I'm going to go with him. And now, I don't like to go past five. So I got to I gotta figure one more out. I'm going to stay out of Penn and Rodriguez because Rodriguez won't help my odds much. And Penn's kind of... I may kick myself. I'll do it in the staff picks because the only thing I heard my... It, Hurt is there is just myself, and I usually don't do too well with those anyway. Uh, if there was money involved, maybe I'd go and do something different, but I'm going to stay out of there. I got to look up. I think Goes brings up a good point with Ansaroff. Jones Leibarger is really, really tough, and she shocked the hell out of me one time against Zoila Fosta when it came to just standing with a 
a decorated striker. So I don't want to get stung there. I got to watch some film there. Harris versus Chase Sherman. I got to see more Sherman footage. I kind of know what Harris brings to the table, but both of, both of them are favorites. So my only dog would be Moraga. But I anticipate that if I put either Harris or Answer off, because the odds are very similar. They're in that 140, 150 range. Dude's 20, not 50. What am I thinking? Normally, it's 20 to 1. So that's a $400 payout. But because I'm playing four favorites and one underdog, I think it'll be closer to like maybe 300 or 350. That's still not bad for just having some fun and only risking 20 bucks. Joe Lazon, Ben Saunders, Joe Moraga, John Moraga, sorry, Frankie Signs, and either Walt Harris or Nina Ansaroff. I think I'm going to roll with that 20 to win about 300, 350, somewhere around there. Now, if there's something out there that gives you better odds, I may take a look at it. We'll see. But right now, that's kind of what I like. How well, about you guys? Early on, though, what I what I kind of like about yours is if you do take Walt and Nina, if for some reason one of those two lose, you're still early in that card where you can regroup and fix your parlay and you would still have about, I think, eight fights left to mess around with. It sucks when your first fight doesn't go off until like midway through the prelims or, or the main card. Then, then your whole night's screwed, right? Because those are the ones that I yeah. think, well... You, know, you brought up something interesting. Go ahead. To go from uh, 5 to 6, it becomes 40 to 1. So my 20 would play, pay closer to 800 bucks, But because I'd have five favorites and one underdog, I want to say I'd be in that 650 to 700 range. But it's interesting. If I feel good enough about both, I may include them and go six instead of five. After all, we're calling these basically lotto tickets. This isn't healthy gambling, by the way, what I'm doing. You know, I, I, that's what you do with, like, the college theory or the squid football picks or the moon of football picks or whoever's hot, whoever has a handle on, on something there. But when it comes to these parlays that we're doing, we realize this, this is a nutty game, but this is a chance to just risk very little and have a good payday. Imagine if you hit 20 bucks to make 800. You that, basically almost get a my free rent. roll of what would that be? Excuse me? That's almost all my rent. Yeah. And you get 40 chances to lose you'd have to lose the next 40 parlays to then basically break even or 39 parlays I guess to basically break even if you just kind of put 20 and bet five or six at a time, depending on whether you have dogs or favorites. It can't be that big if they're favorites. You can go five or six. If you just hit one, that means you can lose 39 and break even. Maybe okay. 35 because of the odds. That's not the end of the world. You hit two of them, you're way ahead of the game. That means basically that's almost probably, if you start in January, 30 to 35 events puts you somewhere around August or September, depending if you're betting Invicta. Bellator World Series. If you're just sticking with the UFC, you may get all the way into November. And you've dropped every single parlay since then. And guess what? You're barely even if you hit this first one. Look at it that way. And if you don't think you can hit five or six right, then you probably shouldn't be gambling. But I'll tell you what. Ben Folks has gone 5-0. and I've gone 5-0. and Goes has gone 5-0. and We've done it. And we're just sticking to the main card. Now you have the whole main card. You have the prelims. On Fight Pass, on FS1, FS2, whatever. So you have you know quite a variety to choose from. I don't know. I think gambling's a ton of fun. Got to be careful, obviously. You know, for some people it can definitely uh, go south, spiral out of control for some people. Oh yeah, yeah. So so do what you can afford. But I think most people can honestly afford that twenty dollars. And it, I don't see it being any different than when you go to someone's house and everyone tosses five or ten and you pick a round in boxing or those Super Bowl parties, same thing. Give me a square. Okay, here's 20 bucks or whatever. All right. We have a listener, Milton from Florida. I think he's from the western part of Florida. He goes with San Tampa. He's hanging out. Let's let's bring him on and say hello. He, he uh, came he? down to visit the studio, so... Let's learn a little bit more about Milton. What's up, Milton? How you doing? Uh, he's, he's walking over right now. You guys oh, want a break while oh, okay. he's getting on? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right, let's take a quick break, and then when 
when we come back, we'll talk to Milton, and then by yeah, the Milton tried to sit in your chair, forward. George. Did he really? Yeah. Beat it, Milton. Move over one. <laughs> Sing to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius.
I get paid to say things in this cool voice, and they get paid to be lame. Here are Gorgeous George and Goes. Ortiz versus Sonnen. It's the Coma Daily and Brennan Ward. Brennan Ward's going to be our first guest. He brings a 14 and 4 resume to the dance. This guy's a finisher, man. 13 of those 14 wins have been finishes, 9 KOs, 4 submissions. Joining us now on MMA Junkie Radio's hotline is Brennan Ward. What's up, Brennan? How you doing? Yeah, hey, what's going on, guys? It's going great, man. Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. You're on with George and Goes. So, congrats. You also cashed in on Clemson on Monday night. So did I, Patna. Did you play the total? What would you do? I also went more. Chilling out. Game. Uh, to that last. But... No, I man, I'm not. You know, I, I really don't. I'm going to say with the NFL and everything. I really don't add. I mean, I love the Patriots. I would say I'm up this way. But, um, you know, if I'm betting, I just, you know, I obviously, I, you know, I'm, but the bottom line is that I'm pretty much a fan of good football. Like, I, I want to see good games. I really don't, you know, I, I won't, uh, all of the pass I'm playing, I'm not going to watch. I'll watch any game. You know, obviously, when you're betting on it, it makes it funner. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, me and my boy, we like betting on them, and that's uh, what we do, bro. You know, it's fun. A lot of hardcores are saying this may be the actual main event. Son and Ortiz are big names in the sport. They've accomplished a lot, but they're certainly past their prime. But you and Paul Daly are not past your prime, and you guys definitely put on a show, win or lose. And obviously, most of the time, you guys are winning. That's why you're featured in this co-main event. Uh, how do you feel about this fight versus Paul Daly? Man, I'm I'm stoked. I'm su I'm super excited to fight Paul. Man, you know me and Paul are tight. You know we're always boys. We're at the fights, man, and. You know, and he's one, dude, he's one of the last old school guys like me, man. You know, we're not, we're not out here posting all our fucking workouts on Instagram and Facebook and shit. We, we handle our business and we get in the cage and we throw it down. You know, and that's why we're the co-main event on the biggest fight of the year. You know what I mean? Because they know, fans know they're going to tune it. It's not, I think Paul and I, we are incapable of putting out a boring fight. You know, win or lose, never boring, ever. You know, I would challenge anybody. What's up? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to cut me off? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, that's why I'm giving you the chance to finish that thought. What, what, what else are you going to no, say? No, I, I was just fucking talking shit anyways. Go ahead. What's up? <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, boss. Listen, I was going to say that award fight was amazing. I'm glad you guys you know, were able to shake hands afterward. I mean, if you can bring over any of that momentum, and I really feel fighters can, I think it would be huge for your career, for what Bellator tries to do with their fighters. That's that I like seeing runs like that when someone can get past somebody and take it to the next fight. And you're doing it, you know, within two and a half months. Do you still feel like, um, like, I, do you put fights behind you and just immediately forget them and focus on the next one, or are you able to bring in some of that momentum from you know previous wins? Uh, All right. Looks uh, like we just it, lost him. It looks like he just dropped. Hmm. He didn't really like me cutting him he off. He was man. so disgusted with that, George, that he just bounced. <laughs> All right, Danny, just tell me verbally when he chimes in or when he gets back, if he gets back, okay? Will do. Hey, right. at what point um, did he fall out? Cause that was a long question. Did he, he, did he catch most of it? or? Uh, uh, it know, looked man. like he... He was still there the last time I checked, and he it, George was definitely in the middle of his question at that point. Oh, he's calling back. Hold on. Let there me uh, answer it. All right. Yeah, you're Final. right, though, in what you're saying, that a lot of people feel like this is the main event. And this is a fight that's just, man, I don't want to say I don't want to jinx it, but it's impossible for it not to be fun. As soon as I saw it. As that, soon as I saw it. Shit. No, I'm just kidding. So what's up? You, you were saying something. <laughs> I was saying do you feel like you're going to carry momentum from that Awad fight over to the daily fight? Are you the type of guy that puts a fight behind them and that's it? Or do you kind of like thrive off that? No, nah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna, I mean, we fight so often, dude. And I mean, so much goes on in between fights and, you know, we get, you know, we get so much time off, you know, in between that. Like, I feel like that, I feel like, you know, like that, if you even have momentum, it dies down. 
You know, like you can't carry momentum over over a couple of months. I mean, it was one thing when I was in college and we would go on a hot streak, like, uh, like dual meets. You got you got a du- two dual meets a week. You got tournaments. Then you can carry some momentum. You know, if you were hot one week and you, you blast to the team that you were supposed to lose to. Now, yeah, everyone's hyped up. You know, now, you know, and like football, same way. Other sports, same way. Carry the momentum. And then they, it's too it's too spread out to really carry momentum. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think th- I think there's a couple exceptions to the rule. Like Donald Cerrone, I feel like because he fights so often, you're like, here we go again. You know what I mean? And it, the, like you guys' timing, it doesn't fall off or anything like that. So I, I just like the fact that it's only been two and a half months and you're doing it again against a, a decorated guy like Daly. The Awad fight's still fresh in our minds. So maybe not physically, but I guess career momentum. It just it carries over. Now with the win over Daly, you have every right to say, give me a shot at the title. You know what I mean? Because you're building off something that happened all and nobody forgot yeah. about it. Yeah, for sure. Man, which was, sweet, you know, which was sick about, about how, you know, when we used to fight in the tournaments, a couple of years back, you know what I mean. You had we were fight, you know. You had, you know, you had three fights in eight weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was yeah. Shit. That, that was like that you know. You want to, you want to talk about momentum? That was momentum. You know what I mean? When you were fighting every four weeks, you know. No doubt. Brandon no, Ward, no. our guest here, he fights Paul Daly on January twenty. This event will be on Spike at nine p.m. Eastern time. That's the start of the main card. And, of course, the prelims you can catch on MMA Junkie at 6.30 p.m. Uh, PM Eastern Time. Lots of names on that prelim as well. Do not overlook that. Chinzo Machida's back. Big Jack May, he'll be fighting on that card. Cody Bollinger. Kevin Casey versus Keith Barry. So lots of local talent from the SoCal area. All right, let me send it to Vegas to my co-host, Goes. Goes, what do you have for Brendan Ward? Brendan, the stat that stands out for me is in your entire career, you've only been to round three one time. And everybody knows yeah, you. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So there you go. Well, everybody knows you as an aggressive fighter, but you would imagine at some point you run into a guy that just says, I don't want a piece of this guy. I'm going to run for, for the remainder of the fight. How do you keep that tempo, cut that guy off? And I mean, that's an amazing stat. How do you get it accomplished? Man, you can't run. You're in a case. Where, where are you going to run to? You're going to run. You can't jump out of the case. It's a small case. Right, what are you going to do? Put your back and get, you know. He just dropped again. For the record, I didn't cut him off. Sure sounded like it. He's going to be pissed. He's going to be fucking back. feisty when he gets back. You got to take one for the team, Danny. You got to say, <laughs> hey, listen, that was my bad, dog. <laughs> Not the guy. That was my bad. Yeah, we got to go to what? Bellator. We got to face somebody. this guy. Isn't he on the East Coast, though? Like, he could track me down. I think he already flew to L.A., so I think you're good. Yeah. Plus, you got one People bad wheel there. anyway, so, I mean, what? if yeah, anything. It means I can't get away from him as fast as you guys. We'll, we'll be like Otis in The Walking Dead. Is he calling back? Feed you to the lions. Not yet. All right. Is Milton there? Uh, he's calling back. Hold <laughs> oh, on. <laughs> Sorry, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> you know Danny answered the phone like, I'm so sorry. We'll treat you a lot better then we've treated Milton. George. Poor guy's been on and off like Matt Damon. Do you know when Danny answered the phone, he was like, I'm so sorry, Brendan Ward. I apologize. Danny's shaking in his <laughs> boots right now. What's the update, Danny? Please. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't, you can't run. I mean, it's, I'll cut you off and I'll either pound, I'll either, you know, throw bombs at your head from the feet or I'll take you down and slam you. You know, so I mean, it would take a dude. It would take a dude that's really, really long, and really, really, you know, with some nasty takedown defense, who's super tall, to maybe be able to run for me. But even then, they're not going to be able to run for five, ten minutes. So I'm not even worried about that. You know, during your run, you had this this fight that you took with Ryzen in Japan. Um, what did you think of that whole experience? And would you be up for doing something like that again in the future? Yeah, for sure. That rising fight, that was, that was that was my favorite fight I ever had. You know, just going to Japan with my boy Jay and, you know, just being in a foreign a foreign land like that and you know, and it was sick, man. The whole experience was sick and you know, fighting in that prestigious arena was was unbelievable. So I would I, yeah, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Brennan, you when, know? In, I would, 
yeah, yeah. What's up? In person, if somebody were to cut you off, how do you handle that? Is that backhand time? Yeah, is that finger in the yeah. chest? What do you do? In yeah, what? If somebody cuts you off in person, how do you handle it? Is it finger in the chest? Is it back? You hang out with anyone who will cut me off anyway, because I don't really hang out with no fucking douchebags or anybody I don't really want to hang out with anyway. Man, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I keep them nice little tight click of boys, and we're just friends. So if someone were to cut me off, that'd be the last time I probably talk to that fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so what's gonna happen yeah. when you see us in LA? Because we, I think we've cut you off twice. We've hung I'm up on you fucking, twice. I'm just fucking. I'm gonna, I got my boys in there. I'm fucking jump you guys. What do you think? <laughs> we're from the east. We're from the you know, we're from the east coast, motherfucker. We don't fight one on one. We're jumping you guys. Is that how they do it on the east coast? You always got to roll deep, huh? That's how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we may have to bring some shanks then just to protect ourselves. No, seriously, yeah, we can't wait to see this fight. You versus yeah, Paul Daly, it's going to be a great one. It's it's For a lot of people, it's the people's main event. Um, but, you know, we realize they got to sell some tickets, and them other guys have been Hall of Famers in that department. So we'll see. We'll see. But who knows? They may give us a classic too. But I know you and Daly definitely won't let us down. You guys always come to fight. Thanks very much for doing the interview. Thanks for the callbacks. We wish you good luck with the rest of your camp and your safe travels to L.A. And we'll see you in a few weeks. All right, man. I'll talk to you. All right. Take care, Brennan. That's Brennan Ward, 14-4 and four overall, fighting at Bell Tour 170 on January 21st. It It's going to be uh, in Inglewood, California, at what used to be the Fabulous Forum. I think it's just the forum now. It was a great Western forum for many years. It was the Fabulous Forum. It was the house that Jack built, meaning Jack Kent Cook. But the Lakers moved on to Staples... Uh, arena there was no more room for the in banners we had, to, we had to upgrade yeah so what they've done is they've given it a facelift and it's a really really beautiful arena a lot of people really enjoyed the time they had out there at ufc 199 that's where luke rockhold lost his title to uh, michael bisping and dan henderson had that savage knockout over uh, hector lombard great card out there in la so uh the acoustics are great the arena was fun and that's the same spot that Bellator is headed on January 21st. So check it out. Go out there and support. We're going to take this break here. And when we come back, we'll talk to Semtex, Paul Daly.
into the MMA Junkie Radio Network. Hit us up on Twitter.com at MMA Junkie Radio. This is MMA Junkie Radio. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Ghost. Quick shout out to Sophia Angela. So she's never able to catch the show live, but maybe she is now. Maybe she's catching the tail end of the show. We just hung up with Brennan Ward. Tony Clark, Vincent Costa also hanging out. So is Bo Mitchell. Shout out to all of you. Um, let me see. I just got a message from Bellator regarding Paul Daly. He won't be ready to go. So we'll probably have to reschedule Paul for either next week or maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be joined by Kevin Casey. Well, no, that's actually where we're trying to shuffle him from today till tomorrow's show. So we'll see what we're going to do with uh, Paul Daly, maybe Kevin Casey, one, the other. None of them. I don't know, but I think we'll, I know we'll make it happen. We have one whole week. The 21st is until the following Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we're okay in that department. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Ensign anyway. He'll be in studio there in Las Vegas. Look him up. He participated in the early days of the sport and had some big wins in his career, including the biggest of his career, which was defeating Randy Couture. I think he gave Randy Couture his first loss. He shook him up. He, that um, was when Randy said, you know what? I got to learn this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Guys. And aside from that, George. Also joined by Ron Cruck from Ooh, Access nice. TV. Access TV fights. We have LFA1 Legacy Fighting Championships. Resurrection Fighting Alliance. They have merged, and that's why it's LFA1. Now it's Legacy Fighting Alliance. They comboed the name. They're going to start off with their first show. And Ron Cruck will be on there, and he'll break down the top fights from that card. So we'll do that. We'll take your calls. We'll you know do some social media. It's fun kind of participating with the Facebookers. And I, I got to open up my YouTube window and see what they're saying. Sometimes they're in their chat and sometimes they're not. But I at least try and go in there at the end of the day and, uh, you know, try and answer some questions that maybe didn't get answered during the show. All right, is Milton still around or is he, is he giving us the middle finger? <laughs> nah, he's here. What's going oh, on? there he is. All right, Milton, sorry that we, we tried to bring you on a couple of times and then uh, you know, you saw what was happening with Brendan Ward, but well, you're there. Hello, and and thanks for taking the time to visit us, man. Sorry I couldn't meet you there. Hey, I'm just glad you guys are actually here. I came by Monday. You, it was all dark. Monday, Monday. Oh, cause goes yeah, goes was with me in Costa Mesa. Has he been there all week? Yeah, t- we're actually leaving today. Oh man, bummer. Wow. Yeah, there's a chance I may be in studio tomorrow, but um, when are you going to come back? I heard something about some junkie gathering talk. Is, uh, are you looking to maybe come down in May and join us for a junkie gathering? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to uh, trying to get my uh, my hall pass. <laughs> his wife was Did cool, though. She, I think she'd let him go. She kind of knew, like she was uh, kind of really? up to his games, but uh, <laughs> she, she didn't uh-huh. look like she had a face of disgust or anything like that. I think I got a good chance. Yeah, what it probably means. What it probably means is that Milton has to take her somewhere before he can come back to Vegas, or he's going to have to bring her to Vegas. But, yeah, put in some work. Get it done, man. You'll uh, you'll really, really enjoy the Junkie Gathering. A lot of news, newbies are coming on this trip. A lot of the veterans from previous trips are coming because we didn't do it last year. So we have two years of uh, built-up excitement for the Junkie Gathering, which I think we're on, like, the fifth or sixth edition and they just keep getting better and better. And if you're into hardcore MMA, it's it's awesome when you're surrounded by all these hardcore MMA fans, junkies, if you will, that, uh, you know, listen to the show, call into the show, participate one way or another, and now become friends and brothers and sisters of ours. So hopefully you'll join us, Milton. Milton. Yes. Tell me who you like, though, between Yaya Rodriguez and BJ Penn. Um, this weekend. Well, my heart wants BJ to win because I've, I've been a long-time Penn fan, but I don't see how he's going to do it. Mm-hmm. From my, from he still has them heavy hands, and if he throws them, you never know. I yeah. mean, he's caught a lot of people and putting them, put them, put them down. He's also got great jujitsu, so we'll see. You know, there's some paths to victory there, but you're right. That last fight was horrific. And yeah, that's what's stuck in my head. Coming, exactly, coming star as well. What were you saying? I said exactly. That's what stuck in my head. His last couple of performances, I mean, he's pretty much retired after each one because he didn't do well. So, I got to see where you got to see where his head's at when he comes back. Correct. All right. We also have a caller on hold. So uh, I think it's just one caller, Danny. Just one. All right. Let's bring him on. What's up, Hal? How you doing? 
Smith is one, the only one, the one and only. Uh, how you doing, man? What's the over? What's the over under? You think this year, for how many days before most of the junkies look wrecked? And, and uh, Milton, you know, usually I uh, I hope you make it out. Usually I come in around Thursday. By Saturday, everyone's looking pretty. To come early, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, at least so you can understand us. <laughs> definitely, definitely. This one, uh, I will say, this junkie yeah, gathering is a little clear, bit more chill, though. To be okay. clear. Hal gets in on Thursday, and that's the same night we usually have a concert, and he's usually passed out in the middle of a concert. So you don't <laughs> wait to Saturday till you're wrecked, Hal. You usually wreck Thursday night. I'm coming Wednesday this time. I'm coming Wednesday. All right. Because is there a yeah, concert yet that we can point to, or is it too early? Or have they even released any type of schedules? You know, I wasn't going to do a concert this year, and then something kind of got thrown on my lap that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. But even then, I can't commit to that yet because um, we're still waiting on a couple other stuff, a couple of venues to open up. So there's a lot of ideas, and I have it somewhat planned out. But because we're still a little early in the game, I don't want to commit to those because I think some other stuff is going to start to free up. Uh, but I, I will give you this. Uh, it looks like um, I think we're going to bring back Trivia Night. Ah, okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it in your hands. You've never disappointed. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. What else you got, Hal? You guys uh, were uh, talking about, um, you know, uh, Max Halloway and what a big star he's hopefully going to become. Uh, you know what? He reminds me of, speaking about BJ Penn, kind of we're going to get nostalgic here, but uh, Max reminds me of those throwback fighters, right? The time when you guys were back in tag. I mean, uh, I wasn't listening uh, back in those days, but, I mean, you guys would talk to guys. There was no script guys spoke from the heart and that's who max reminds me of so we had kind of like a a starting five of guys who give zero f's and just keep it real that just want to fight anybody anytime get in the ring no script no gimmick when they're in front of the mic who would that be for you just to throw out mine um i'm thinking masvidal you know robbie lawler max halloway uh th- those are the guys that, that come to mind and i just want to hear maybe uh, your starting five of guys that are just real, you know. You put the mic in front, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a genuine guy who just wants to fight. All right. Well, you want to go first, guys? Um, I don't know if I can come up with with five off the bat, but maybe I know maybe three. King Mo for sure is one of those guys that just you know whatever comes out of his mouth, that's what he feels. He's not a uh, he's not making any of that up. I think Dominic Cruz is pretty sincere in everything that he says, and maybe like Anthony Johnson. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm thinking more of guys that just want to fight. The guys who really don't even think about the business. They're uh, just fighters. You know? Cowboy. Like Max is kind of right. like that. And, you know, Matt, Cowboy. Yeah. Definitely cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy. Yeah, Robbie, Robbie Max, Lawler. Robbie Lawler is probably king, right? Robbie Lawler is gangster for sure. And you know who? Yeah. We, we met him once in studio, and he just seems to prove it. And he's proved it on the reality show, and he's proved it on a couple of those embedded. Cody Garbrandt looks Cody like he's Garbrandt, ready to throw down at any point, whether he's wearing a suit. Uh, whether he's with with or without his family, it doesn't matter. If you say the wrong thing, it seems to be on with him. Mm-hmm. A few of the other yeah. guys have that, hey, you don't want none, but there's like this layer right. of like, you know, professionalism or they're thinking it through, and then there's these other straight-up Gs that, you know, are pulling out their knives. And So, yeah, I think yep. that there's a couple. I'm not sure uh, where Johnson sits. I know it wouldn't be pretty if Johnson flipped the switch, that's for sure, but... Yeah. um can you think Hector. of any other guys? Yeah, Dustin Hector Poirier. Uh, he's like that, and so is Justin Gagey. Yeah. Hey, Justin, Justin Gagey. Gagey. I hope that guy never leaves the World Series of Fighting. He blocks punches with his head. I, I don't know why. I mean, Travis <laughs> Whitman must go nuts. But that guy's going to – man, he's going to have a short career. I mean, he's fighting Buscape, and Buscape is lining him up, you know, right? Yeah, ahead. yeah. He he needs to yeah. get better defensively. That's for sure. Because we don't want to take years off his career, but yeah. uh, he seems to be a little stubborn with that's my style. It's the way I do it. But we'll see. A lot of fighters yeah. either they have kids or they just kind of have this coming to Jesus moment, or they go back and look and say, "Oh my God, I almost I almost cost my career." And and yeah. and so it's it, we call it the maturing process. All right, how we got to move on. We're closing okay. up shop. But thanks, great questions. Later. Thanks for calling in as always. So, folks, we want to thank our guest, Brennan Ward. Uh, and sorry about uh, Paul Daly and Kevin Casey. We will reroute them. we got one more week to get them in. 
all three participating on the Bellator 170 card happening next uh, Saturday in Los Angeles, Inglewood to be more exact. Goes with I will be there in attendance. 30. Milton, it was nice to meet you. Thanks for coming out, brother. And hopefully we'll see you soon at a junkie gathering or some other time. You're more than welcome to come by anytime. Thank you very much. All right. So for Danny and Goes, I'm George. Have yourselves a nice day. We'll see you all tomorrow with Ensign Inouye and Ron Cruck. Maybe the guys that missed today. Maybe another surprise or two. Who knows? I'm George. And uh, go out there. Be champions. Las Vegas turning day into night. Time turning night.